The big boys are ready to max it up. Break dancing, slow dancing, whatever dancing you have. We're going to get you covered all throughout the day here at sportsbookreview.com. But last night, Teddy, Arizona State and North Dakota State move on as the last two teams to get out of Dayton. Arizona State, if you had them, minus two. Congratulations. A nice, easy wire-to-wire winner. But if you had the North Dakota State game, you sweated it right up to the end on a missed three-point shot. Foul! Don't foul! The misery of a sports gambler, Teddy. Sure, it was a sweat and a half, whichever side you had uh, last night. Certainly, uh, Heron had a real rough night for St. John's. One of 12 from the floor that made things pretty easy for Arizona State, although we should give the Sun Devils defense some credit for that. But uh, the sweat in the early game, those are always fun. Of course, we've got the lines already posted for Friday's first-round matchups. These are the play-in games, per se. Duke, minus 27 over North Dakota State, 148 and a half the total there. Buffalo opened five and a half over Arizona State. We've already seen the money come for the underdog Sun Devils. That line down to four and a half now on Friday, total 156. So that's what we have for the winners of the two play-in games last night. Yeah, outside of those lower-level teams, Teddy, you're almost seeing the same type of M.O. because Buffalo is going to play, you know, comes out, open up five and a half, now down to four and a half. You have that same type of scenario where Maryland comes out at about maybe four, four and a half. You're seeing that line around three now. The one interesting thing, Teddy, is they don't do you any favors. I mean, you get to play in that first four game. You get the win. It's nice. You know, maybe the nerves are out the door, but you're shipped off Belmont. From what I was reading, Teddy had like 25 minutes to pack up in Dayton, ship out to Jacksonville, gets in at 5 a.m. when obviously Maryland, who hasn't played, much more rested and ready and a more leisurely pace probably getting to Jacksonville. Any advantage that you look at, Teddy, when trying to bet into those type of situations? Oh, yeah. yeah. And plus, you want to look at those start times. You know, it makes a big difference in my mind if you're playing a day game versus a night game, whether you have 36 hours to prep with travel or 48 hours to prep or with travel. It does make a difference. I'm always concerned about the teams that played the play-in game and then have an early start game just two days later. Yeah, no, you're right, because when you take a look at that Belmont game, Teddy, they had the late game in Dayton, 9 o'clock. They get in at 5 a.m. You know, you're not playing your normal 7 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock start. Wofford, excuse me, uh, Maryland's going to tee it up against Belmont at 3.10 this afternoon. We'll see how that plays out. Getting motivated, Teddy, for the NIT. The team's in the big dance. They're there. They're having fun. They're ready to go. But when we take a look at the number one overall seed in the tournament, not a lot of fire lit from those boys down on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Opened up at seven and a half. Line goes down to 16 and a half. And they end up getting beat outright at home. And the best part about it, Teddy, is watching that game go down. You saw Alabama. You saw the crowd there, which for a normal SEC game is packed. Maybe 20% of the gym filled. And it sure looked like that same energy level is what Alabama had as well. About 20%. I mean, that's the way Alabama played the back half of the season. You know, that team did not buy into what Avery Johnson was selling. And we saw them be tentative, be cautious, be a bad team. You know, I know they were on the bubble. They played well early, but Bama down the stretch played poorly. And they certainly were not motivated. The fans were motivated. And as a 16 and a half point favorite, the number one overall all seed in the tournament, bye bye. You know, but that's not unusual. For the NIT, the first round of the NIT can be a minefield. Look at what happened with Providence, you know, their night. They figured they had an easy win over Arkansas. Arkansas was without their best player. Oops. (laughs) You know, Razorbacks come out on fire, dominate early. Providence never able to match their energy, never able to rally back uh, to even tie the game, let alone win it. So you do see, especially in those first round NIT games, motivation can and will be an issue. Sometimes team catch a spark here in March and go on a run and sometimes teams like Alabama and they just don't give a shit. Teddy, don't you wish like, you know, sports gambling, you know, for what most people on the outside think, oh, geez, I'm just going to pick this team and that team going into it. Don't we wish it was paid by the numbers and you could say, hey, look, Brown's playing UAB. Their best players transferring. What an easy win for UAB, loser. And then you say the same thing because I think that Providence line opened up around five and a half or six, closes around eight. And you say, hey, great. Their best players out. I'm going to take Providence, loser. Don't you wish it was a lot easier in the sports world, Teddy? <laughs> no, you can't wish it was easier because <laughs> then we wouldn't have sports betting. If it was easy, everyone would do it. The books would be out of business, and then that'd be that. You know, it has to be hard because that allows those of us who put the time and effort and energy into it, those of us with the experience to figure out the nuances, to have a legitimate edge over time betting sports. So, yeah, the dream scenarios, they're fine, but I don't mind the situation as it is right now. There's opportunities for us, Donnie, 
even though there are never any true locks. Teddy, as the one company says, if it's so easy, a caveman can do it. Not correct here on that sports betting show and also that betting show, I should say. Major League Baseball first look, Teddy. And if you didn't know, if you woke up today, one team's 2-0 and in Major League Baseball. Yes, one team is 0-2. Those 2-0 and teams, the Mariners getting another win this today early over the Oakland Athletics. I don't know if anybody even watched or cared because, again, Major League Baseball's opening day coinciding right with March Madness. Not the smartest look in the world. Milwaukee Brewers, Teddy, 2018, good baseball team. 96 wins, 67 losses. Currently sitting at an 18-1 to ticket to win the 2019 World Series. Brewers win total. Uh-oh, 85 and a half, down from 96 last year. I really like this lineup, though, Teddy, when you take a look at it. The outfield, uh, Braun Kane and MVP Kristen Yelich coming back. An infield that has some power and also some speed. The one interesting thing, though, here, Teddy, in the infield, second baseman Mike Moustakis hasn't played there, I don't think, in high school, college, pros, whenever, but they're going to give it a go because the analytics say you can play any position as long as you can rake at the plate. Pretty good pitching staff front line, and I really, Teddy, like this bullpen. All right. Certainly, when we look at Milwaukee last year, we're talking about uh, the most profitable team in baseball. I mean, they made a fortune for their supporters. They were overachievers all year. And that's why you're seeing a team that won 96 games last year being lined 10 wins lower than that this season. The issue with the Brewers, in my mind, is twofold. One, you had a bunch of guys on offense that had career years last year, including Yelich. And Yelich may be that good. You know, I can is Braun and Kane going to, but Braun's getting old, you know? Uh, so on offense, they had a bunch of guys overachieve a year ago. I don't know they can do that in 2019, two years in a row, though. You know, uh, Grandel behind the plate, certainly uh, a nice pickup for them in that regard. And Moustakis, who's, you know, I mean, he's never been a real masher, but he's been decent. But I, I do worry about the Brewers' ability to score runs. You talk about the bullpen, the bullpen's great. But the starting staff, I mean, there are questions everywhere with this starting staff. They don't have a number one. They don't have a number two. They've got a bunch of guys that may or may not be able to eat up innings. The advanced metrics on every Brewer starter last year were pretty lousy, which is why they made so much money for their backers, because the market didn't go nuts over this team. I question whether those starters can live up to the uh, live up to what they did a year ago. I question whether that lineup can live up to what it did uh, a year ago. And when you look at that division, not a whole lot of weaklings. The Reds are better. The Pirates are every bit as good. The Cardinals are going to be there. The Cubs are going to be there. And I think Milwaukee takes a step back this year, potentially a big step back. Teddy, real quick on the uh, team photo there, when we take a look at it, it says 85 and a half. You know, some people say, oh, well, wow, they lost a lot of players. They're not going to look to be not going to be as good as they were last year. But I actually attribute it to say this division is really good. And there's a reason why. I mean, you win 96. A lot of things have to go your way. But if we're trying to put, you know, a little bit of randomness in there, or maybe you take a little bit of step back and other teams improve, like you said, the Reds, it's not necessarily a bad thing at 85 and a half, even though they won 96 the year before, right? No, they're still bad. I mean, they're being lined as a, as a better than average team, as a much better than average team. You know, and when you add up all the wins and factor in the juice <laughs> uh, with the MLB win totals, you're going to see every team, you know, it ends up lining up with the appropriate amount of wins with the, every team getting 81 uh, or averaging to 81. So when you see a team that is lined four and a half, five games above that, and Milwaukee's gotten two-way action. Uh, in the win total betting markets prior to the season. We've seen uh, some groups come in uh, and really like Brewers over. Other groups have come in and bet said, no, 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 we're taking it the other way. So this particular season win total has seen a fair bit of volatility, and there are definitely wise guys on both sides of the Brewers heading into the 2019 season. Some people love them, some people hate them. The bottom line is that's not a giant bandwagon team where everybody loves them, or everybody hates them. Teddy, on that betting show here, we like to promote some good things out there and a chance to win some money. Hopefully you're cashing your tickets as you move along here in March Madness. How about a little SBR Madness, Teddy? A private poker tournament now open for registration using the password SBR2019. When is it going to be, Teddy? Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Tournament number 272-73699. I know you're not going to remember that, but I'm sure we'll have some graphics at the bottom of the screen. Registration is now open. Win your trip to the Final Four. $1,000 U.S. cash prizes. It's free. It's me, Teddy. been saying it all week. Win on the court. Win with SBR and poker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, free. This is the operative word. Free. You like to play poker? Sit down to the poker tournament. You got a chance to win Final Four tickets and 1000 bucks and hotel and flight and all that kind of good stuff. It is a good prize pool. 